uh, you know, like there's been a sharp 90 degree angle made in the Adam 22 okay. lefty gunplay trajectory. Let's hear about this from your perspective, so then I can I can tell you why you're wrong about everything. No, and I would love to hear all about it, but so it, this is just the way I, I want to hear how you would describe it to a no jumper fan that you just ran into at the crack house or the bar, <laughs> as it may be, or the the crack house on the way to the bar, or, or the burly Hessian house. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm keeping it big and burly. Keep it burly. So uh, essentially, it seemed like there has been a contentious relationship with Lefty, although like, and the history of it is literally we do an interview, the whole interview is smooth. Great interview. One thing I say is that a lot of people have been saying you're the Mexican Crip Mac. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really act offended by that in the moment, but then as he goes on other podcasts, he starts communicating the fact that that was upsetting to him, and apparently at some point during that, he took it so far that he put it on his dead homies that he would never come back to No Jumper. So I feel like that that's the primary thing getting in the way of us uh, continuing our on-camera but, but, relationship. But then there's been dialogue since then that kind of alluded to the fact that there might be a possibility of reconciliation. I mean, and- I'm certainly open to it. When I reached out to Solis about it, uh, or I just sent him a DM or whatever, and that was his explanation. is like, you know, Lefty believes that he has to stand on principles. He said that he put it on his dead homies. He wouldn't even come back to no jumper. But then he did say something suggesting that there that there's a Lefty Gunplay music video that he was interested in premiering on no jumper, which obviously I was open to. I invited them to the store on Saturday. They didn't mm-hmm. show up. I don't. Well, actually, I think that they were at the Kendrick thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know uh, exactly where that's at. But yeah, anyway, Bands releases his music video mm-hmm. last week in and, which... And, and previous to that, you were like, you were fucking with Bands. You're feeling Bands. Correct? I like Bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's a good guy. I think he's, he's a cool dude. But, you know, he releases the video in which he basically goes to Lefty Gunplay's neighborhood, um, does... Graffiti in all red, repping the Nortenia shit. Um, posts up on the porch. He has actually like a lookalike lefty. They didn't mm-hmm. seem like they tried that hard to make it look like lefty, but a yeah, guy who's like lefty. A, a lefty imposter of sorts. He's got him him on deck. And then he's... I assume this is Ash Bash. No, it's not. Um, and then... Uh, what else is he doing in the video? He's, yeah. He uses B-roll of lefty's mom. Mm-hmm. From Duno's interview. From a Duno vlog. And he also raps about me and raps about fucking his mom. Now, this, considering that we, you know, routinely interview drill rappers who basically will, who who have, like, literally, in some cases, like, dug up the graves of their ops. Yeah. Never mind, like, spray-painted their fucking headstones and shit like that. I mean, really, when you compare it to all that, is this that far, that much farther over the line? I don't know, not not so much, but to be honest, the mom stuff made me feel kind of uncomfortable. That, that was the primary thing where I felt like I had to at least put out some kind of statement about how I felt about that, since I know, I, did, I actually didn't see that much of it, but I still felt like I wanted to make the statement in terms was of- Was it based on the visual of the, ha- having the visual in there, like married to the lyric, or because the lyric in and of itself is like, by diss track Sanders kind of benign, right? Saying, I fuck, oh, fuck your mom or something. Yeah, that's like pretty... Yeah, no, like, you're right, though. It was the combination of like showing his mom. Yeah, yeah. The, because, that to me was a little bit like, damn, like this feels like it might be going in a bad direction. That was definitely the first time that I thought, oh, maybe giving voice to the Northerners was not such a great idea. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should have just let them keep fizzling it up. Mm-hmm. But well, it's a uh, well, like there, there's a few things as far as far as the mom thing goes in battle rap. There's definitely like different levels of lines that can be crossed and what's like appropriate and what's taboo. But it feels like well, this is so far removed from battle rap. One thousand percent. This is gangster one, shit. But even in battle rap, it's like one thing when when there's the ambiguous character of your mom or right. your girl, your bitch, whatever. And it's different when you take the vlog footage of your yeah, mom that, from like. like a month or two ago and it, it, stick that in the video yeah, yeah it, it like uh, it once once someone will will take it from just just saying like you know saying your mom to actually saying the name or all that there's different levels of disrespect and uh yeah i think that 
it just it, it gets tricky out here and i think that you know like you're probably you're super accustomed to dealing with the 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 bds and the gds that come through you super stuff that's in- usually like very much not in our backyard yeah i mean that was one thing that i kind of took from like having conversations about this with you know an icon or a swifty is that this is very much unprecedented yeah in terms of the northerners coming down here and specifically doing this sort of stuff in their neighborhood. And apparently this was all within like the last week. Yeah. So the narrative that they did this, which I assumed as well, that they did this after while the they interview, were, after thought, the interview, I, I, I so assumed too. that just because it's a long fucking drive. Yeah. Apparently that is not the case. So I would be interested to know, like, what time of day this took place. It didn't, it didn't have, like, a dusk-type no, vibe. No, it could have been, like, 10, or dawn. 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Could have been. You it definitely didn't look like turned-up hours, for sure. I mean, either way, it's like— You could go look at the takers. You could go to any hood and, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, any hood, if you go there at 10 a.m., yeah. realistically— there's not that many dudes who are like dying to be standing out there on the corner. That's not really how it's done these when days. When the right? shooters are at school and shit like that, you feel me? Like, yeah. It's, but um, and from my understanding, Lefty left this area. Right. It yeah, does yeah, not yeah. live there, and apparently his mom probably doesn't live there. As yeah. Well. Yeah. No. No. But regardless, like what what you said before is right. I think that the biggest, my biggest takeaway, and the thing that struck me way more than the mom diss or all anything else is. You know, it's, you don't really. I in my life, I don't think I've ever seen like a big ass Norte tag. Or right. Because why Picasso would they? It's very like hard to imagine. Southern yeah. cat. And I've, like, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that that really invited a whole other energy. But it's crazy because you look at like the most successful like Chicano slash Mexican rappers of all time, right? Like, right. look at Be Real, all right? Like, now, if people that really know about Real, Be Real know he was a blood anyway, you feel me? He's uh-huh. half Cuban. He is part Mexican. A lot of people don't, like, look at him as Mexican, though he is Mexican. And he's never, like, pushed a gang-banging agenda right. in his music, which makes him... Look at Burner is kind of the same, but on the other side of the spectrum, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. like, Burner like, grew up in Frisco, obviously grew up around, like, Northerners. But it, that's the precedent, is that if you are from Northern California and you want to fit in on a national level or be able to do business down in the South, you kind of... Don't gangbang. Well, you you kind of have wax. to put that to the side. You gotta, but, but it's kind of the same thing, too, like, for Be Real, because Be Real... And let's, let, let's even throw OGZ in there. Like, OGZ is kind of... Like, uh, we, we have proof of concept right now that being, They're here? Break is here. Break is here. Being a non-active gang member mm-hmm. is beneficial for, for like, um, your career if you're a Chicano rapper. Like, mm. look, OG's a perfect example. OG's is able to do shows in Santa Cruz, in Petaluma, all through Northern Cali, in Eureka, in Frisco, in Oakland. Have that shit jump in. People love that fool. So he can, he can go up north, and he it's totally all good. He totally can go up oh, north, okay. and it's all good. I've and always it, wondered about what he was doing in terms of the street level, because I've always noticed him. What up? I always noticed him doing, like, the CC back in the day instead of the CK. Yeah, yeah. Didn't really know what to think of it. What you mean, CK, homie? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm talking about OGZ. But then also, like, he wears a lot of blue. Yeah. So I never really, I, I never knew. I never really asked. Well, like, like he, he definitely, as, as far as him doing shows up north, like, I've been at sold-out shows he's had throughout For Northern sure. Cali. Like, the Catalyst and Santa Cruz, all that shit. Now, as far as, um, like, his banging and all that, like, the, like he said on here multiple times, he's a tagger. He grew up, like, right. tag-banging and stuff. I'm sure if he... God forbid got busted He would roll with the Mm -hmm. homies You know what I'm saying He'd roll with you know Like with his race and all that But like he's not actively pushing that agenda And guess what Not only is he able to do these shows And go places other people can't go As a result He fucking was invited to the Kendrick Lamar thing You feel me He's the only rapper Hmm. Mexican rapper That was because he's cool with Rucci And G Perico and YG and him And that's I'm sure there's other things It was was click banging Yeah yeah Clicks up there Hmm Right. But ain't, um, Shoreline, I thought Shoreline Mafia had something to do with Venice Shoreline. No, it no. not. Because I was they, in jail, so I'm like, Shoreline Mafia, like, oh, that's hard. No, Little that, kids out of Venice rapping. That shit confused the hell out of me when I first seen it. I was like, yeah, like, I'm, like they're called what? And then, I, but yeah, but, you know, it's all. So what, what, what crib neighborhood was he raised in? 
Who no, he wasn't raising a crip neighborhood. No, but you said he was doing the CC. Was it just to be cool? I mean, like, this is this is probably 2017, 2018 yeah. that we're talking about, and he's hanging out with so Greedo and yeah, all what these area guys. Do they come from? He's from, he's from, from West Hollywood. Hollywood. He's from East Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh, yeah, East Hollywood. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He just was just trying to find some. There, there's no. He was finding himself at the time. He was probably learning to spell. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what's and, funny is the closest Crips to him would have been the Playboys, right? Like low key. He's Hollywood. Yeah, like low key. That's the closest Crip set to you. Like, no, no. What do you mean? East that's Hollywood. Like, yeah, that's like the right first street East Coast is the, Okay, that, yeah, that, yeah, all that shit on the that's, East side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, if you go east, but that's it. that's further. Like you really no, got. If you go straight down Vermont, it'd be the closest Crip hood. You go like you go like five minutes away. You know what I mean? Like Playboys right, is like an hour from them. No, no. Traffic hour. You talk about Playboys. Boy against the crib. Yeah, fool. That's West LA. That's right East there. Hollywood, Cadillac, West LA. Cadillac. That's like not that far away. Corning. Like that's not that far away. Anyways, you just yeah, got, you you just know, got you, politics yeah, on. Yeah, no, he got politics <laughs> though, because he knows he's sounding crazy. <laughs> nah, that's close, East Hollywood. Fool. Say Kaiser. Yeah. You saying the Kaiser in yeah, East yeah, Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like El Paso Central Hollywood. So like he's talking about by the one ten. Normandy. Okay, and then he's yeah, talking okay, about yeah, way yeah. to the four hundred five. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It is kind of like that. Yeah, like during traffic, it would be you know hell. But that's my West D mind. I'm always going. Everything. I'm always gonna go west. Yeah, like, but that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because they are higher up though. But the schoolyards is before them. They close to they close to them too. Yeah. They close yeah. to them too. But I, yeah, no, I think that ultimately, like, uh, with OGs, like him not being an active gang member mm. has helped him ascend in a lot of ways. Okay, let me ask you this, Brick. If you had to guess what the lefty gunplay response is going to be to bands going to his neighborhood and using footage of his mom in the video, et cetera, like, you know, and it's not like this has, like, you know, gotten a, a small number of people witnessing it because, as you no, can no, see no, here, bands from the Rose, 400,000 views yeah. on the Shimo Media channel, That's which basically means that this is the most popular video to date on this YouTube channel, aside from some other videos that are like many years old. So, basically, like, this is probably the most talked about song coming out of Northern California in the last year or two. For sure. Nah, nah. Damn, that's He's talking about for the, for, the, for the Rasa, though, right? The most talked about song for the Rasa from out of Northern? Well, I mean, well, you guys, I'm saying on the Shimo just, Media channel oh, that posts oh, a lot right, of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing j Bo like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's got his own thing. But in terms of the Northern Mexican community who doesn't necessarily get as for much sure. no, attention no, no, historically, sure. that's, that's one of the, everywhere. The, that, that, that's one of the, the biggest, like, that's one of the, the biggest records that's ever come out in, like, you know, Northern Cali, like Norteño hip hop, especially, like, on some track transcending that bubble and having more people be aware of it because they, they, they like the bay you already know their fan base is so crazy that mm. they have a self-sustaining ecosystem where there's a good 50 60 thousand people that'll fuck with anything you put out i've never seen the essay in the bay i just oh, they, haven't seen it i know they're there you, you have you, just, you just don't know yeah you for sure. all dress like yeah us and then i like it's not like they hit up on the walls and shit the same like they do but it's not as much but you 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 for yeah, sure yeah like you go down you see go you go see a big old one three or one eight or something coming through L A you ain't go yeah. you're not gonna miss it. Yeah. Well, there's like a significant more. I would say like there's a bigger black influence in Northern Cali than there is in oh, Southern yeah. Cali. Yeah, overall. you see like, that you know, all the time. Yeah. Or even yesterday when I had the dude bands the, from Stockton, the, the, the uh, different bands, who's the one that beats with J-Bo in them. Yeah. He's a full-blown crip and he's fully Mexican. And he, he it was fun talking to him, too, because he's talking about jail and shit. He's, he's like, like, you know, I run ways. black. I run black. So, yeah, like, you know, he's like. It's a so, problem. Yeah. I mean, but he but don't seem like he door, got a problem. Not the door if I'm tripping because the North Days, they, they, we, we could affiliate ourselves with North Days on the yard. Yeah, full, like the full. blacks, we, we fuck with them on the yard. I feel like the, like everybody in the Bay Area, low key, like talks the same, has the same slang. Like there's it was the Thiz, it was the Thiz movement. Ever since Mac Dre, ever since, ever since, yeah. they've all been on the same type of time, and it's just like different vibes in the air up there. Like we own that tense gangbang vibe down here. They don't got no, no. black gang members to, 100%. To, to to like beef with. Yeah, they got sets and clicks and all that up there, but niggas Turfs. ain't just like like we come outside, it's like we on the yard still. Yeah, it's different for sure. Like where you from? You got shower shoes on? Like yeah. if, you, if you had to guess how does Lefty proceed? How does he respond? What is the proper response? 
that's what I was trying to figure out. Where is the hoods out there? That's what I bought that up for. Uh, he got to go up it. I mean, he, he needs to respond with a who I smoke at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not trying to push the narrative, but he fuck around go to jail with his his tweaky ass over this shit right here <laughs> cause you got a thing you tell a mad tweaker what to do you can't tell a mad tweaker what to do or what not to do but I mean is Le- Lefty Gunplay is not gonna drive seven hours north to make a statement right he need to do that he- and drop it on the Thizzler Fizzler ain't doing that. So yeah. Fizzler already uh, said they wouldn't uh, drop his freestyle because he dissed the North. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, 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 they were, need to they pay were. whatever. <laughs> like at this point, it, it's just business. At this point, you know what I mean? <laughs> like he was on some list that Fizzler posted of like the top like up and coming Southern Cali rappers or whatever. But like, then oh, again, yeah. yeah, it's like the Southsiders. They didn't see. The North Day's coming. Like this shit, like it's like bullshit. They they went in there and did they thing real quick. They I bet you they wouldn't have did that between the hours of nine at night and six in the morning. Yeah, or or when the or, tweakers is outside. Or or, or, yeah. or when they're not outside at fucking ten in the morning. No, that's was, when they did it. Yeah. Like, that's when they did it. it that you, your vibe was that it was in the morning? Yeah, it was like yeah. an early day thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. While everybody was coming down off their bender. You know what's crazy, though, is, like, that dude, uh, Rico Too Smooth's energy is completely different. And I feel like he's actually... I feel like that dude has potential to be, like, a really big rapper. I agree. And in that Big Tone interview that I just did, when I was talking about the the Northerners that I interviewed, I was like, you know, you are super respectful. Rico Too Smooth, super respectful. Even Lazy Boy was real respectful, even though they ended up doing diss tracks afterwards or whatever. And I was like, you know, Bands, he's a little disrespectful. And this is before the lefty fucking diss came out. Yeah. So... You know, he had already, like, been talking shit, like, during the interview and stuff, like, a little bit messier than, than, uh, what, what is Gold Toes hitting me up? Is he watching me live? He has to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talking yeah, about yeah. North Day. Yeah, nah, but he's be. just sending me, like, a random artist to check out or uh, whatever. Uh, he's trying his to ears just ringing like a yeah. motherfucker right <laughs> That's now. That's crazy. Like, yeah. that we talking about North Days and Gold Toes. <laughs> yeah, his ears ringing like a motherfucker. But, um, I don't know. That's been a pretty wild one to watch proceed. And then-